Hello guys, in this video, I am going to teach you the top 7 tips and tricks about how to increase the lifestyle of Ruby. Ow! Number 1. Use a skin. This is pretty obvious but some people still do not know about this. Whenever you use a skin, you will see the skin attributes that gives additional 8 physical attack to Ruby. I know that this is really low but if you really want to make your lifestyle higher then you should consider every possible way to increase it. But I am not so sure if this is just a minor bug or it is the rule of MLBB. Now, let me show you the difference of having a skin and having no skin at all. Don't worry since I never cheat on my own studies, the result of no skin is from my account in advanced server and I do not have any skins there. You can see here that I only have 129 physical attack. This confirms that having no skins at all do not gives you an additional physical attack. And this is the lifestyle of no skins. I use magic emblem here so I won't get any additional attributes that will give me a wrong outcome. And here's the attributes of my account that have skins. You can see that even that I use the default skin of Ruby, I still get the additional 8 physical attack. The default 129 physical attack of Ruby plus the bonus 8 physical attack I get from skin is equal to 137. And here is the lifestyle outcome of having a skin. I also use magic emblem here so we will get an accurate result that we need. And if we actually compare them, you can see that having no skins gives you only 101 lifesteal, and 103 lifesteal for having a skin. The two difference might be low, but just like what I said, if you want to get the highest possible lifesteal then you must use everything you could ever possibly use. Number 2. Use Killing Spree. I know that this is actually not a part of lifesteal, but some people was asking for this so I decided to include this one. If you do not know Killing Spree, it is a talent of Assassin Emblem where you will regenerate 12% of your max HP every time you successfully killed an enemy. This means you can regenerate a total of 60% HP if you manage to do a Savage. This is the one of the reason how I manage to win some fights even I am outnumbered. This is the demonstration of using this Killing Spree. Number 3. Use Physical Lifesteal instead of Spell Vamp. Did you know that beside Ruby getting a bonus of 10% Physical Lifesteal, she also have the power to enhance the Physical Lifesteal effect she gets from equipment by 115%. But before we proceed, I actually did some experiments here and I prove Ruby's bonus 10% Physical Lifesteal was also enhanced by her own passive skill. It means 10% physical lifesteal enhanced by 115% is equal to 11.5%. And we will prove that physical lifesteal is better than spell vamp by using has claws and bloodlust axe. And we will compare their lifesteal output. The reason why I decided to compare those two items, is because this is the perfect item to compare the difference of spell vamp and physical items, because both items gives the same amount of physical attack and same percentage of lifesteal. While both items give 70 physical attack, Haas Claws gives physical lifesteal while Bloodlust Axe on the other hand gives spell vamp. This is the outcome of using a Haas Claws. And this is the outcome of using Bloodlust Axe. You can see that both demonstration deal the same amount of damage but still get a different amount of lifesteal. That is because Haas Claws was enhanced by Ruby's passive. If we do the math, let's start this by getting the given information. The bonus we get from Ruby's passive is 11.5% and the damage we dealt to enemy is 560. Now, the 20% physical lifesteal we get from Haas Claws multiplied by 115% is equal to 23%. So Ruby using Haas Claws means she gets 23% from her equipment added to Ruby's passive which is 11.5% is equal to 34.5%. Now the 34.5% of 560 we dealt to enemies is 193.2. Now on the other hand, Ruby using Bloodlust Axe means she gets 20% from her equipment added to Ruby's bonus lifesteal which is 11.5%. Then she gets a total of 31.5%. The 31.5% of 560 damage is 176.4.
The reason why you guys cannot see any decimals here is because MLBB is using a formula to hide the decimals or maybe they have a round off rule here. Now, see the difference? This is the reason why no one really use bloodlust acts nowadays. Number 4. Use emblems that gives lifesteal. Now here. I am going to show you some emblems that actually gives lifesteal. I am going to use each emblems with the best damage composition so the results might be unfair. The reason why I do this is to show you which emblems actually gives the best lifesteal. Because that is actually our topic here, to show you the best emblems that gives lifesteal. If you want to see a fair comparison then I highly suggest that you watch our past tutorials which I also made as detailed as possible. The first one is Assassin Emblem. This emblem actually gives a fix amount of 5% spell vamp. Now, let's try this in a custom and see how much lifesteal she gets from it. I max all emblems already so all demonstration you will see here is the result of the maximum potential of each emblem. I will use endless battle item only in all demonstration just for a bonus 10% lifesteal. The reason why I do this is because, if Ruby didn't reach the minimum lifesteal she must get, it won't appear or show in the screen how much she gets. So we needs endless battle for this type of demonstration. Now let's start. She gets a total of 159 lifesteal using this emblem. That only assumes if you are in a 1v1 fight because this emblem increase Ruby's damage whenever there is only one enemy near her. Now let's proceed to Marksman Emblem. This emblem gives a total of 10% lifesteal, but can be enhanced whenever you buy physical attack items on her. You can maximize this emblem's potential when you buy Blade of Despair. This emblem gives 172 lifesteal, having only endless battle. Now let's proceed to Fighter Emblem. This emblem gives 8% spell vamp and can be upgraded up to 20%. Now let me show you the demonstration for this one. This emblems have 161 lifesteal at 0 kill. Hmm, a and have 224 lifesteal at 12 kills. So far this emblem gives the highest lifesteal of all if you were able to fully stack this emblem. Now, let's proceed to the last one which is Jungle Emblem. This item gives a total of 7.5% hybrid lifesteal. Hybrid lifesteal means you get both physical and magical lifesteal. Jungle Emblem only gets 145 lifesteal. So far, Full Stack Fighter Emblem gives the highest lifesteal. I hope this information will help you gain more knowledge about the game. Number 5. Increase your damage output. As you might have already noticed, whenever we do the math, we always compute it based on the damage output. It means that our lifesteal depends on how much damage we can deal. The more damage we can deal, the more lifesteal we get. And we can increase the damage output we deal by increasing our physical attack and physical penetration. So, you might be thinking that instead of increasing the damage output, why don't we simply increase the lifesteal percentage? I actually explained this already in my past tutorials, but today, I am going to simply make a demonstration so it would be much easier to understand. I will show you two different demonstration. One is using full lifesteal build, included oracle, and one is full damage build. First is that I have fully stacked the demon hunter sword to get the maximum lifesteal of it. And lower my HP to fully get the maximum potential of Haas claws. You can see that I have 85% physical lifesteal already and 20% spell vamp. Ruby's passive that enhance 115% physical lifesteal is still not included in the 85% physical lifesteal. You can see here that I only dealt 756 damage but I still got 1156 lifesteal. This means that my lifesteal is more than 100%. Wow. What a godly lifesteal I have here. Now, let's proceed to damage build. Let's make War Axe fully stack first and lower the enemy's HP to maximize the potential of Blade of Despair. Chasing. Oh my goodness, did you see that insane lifesteal? I was able to get 1744 lifesteal and dealt 2334 damage. This is the reason why you should make your damage output higher rather than increasing your lifesteal percentage. Because your lifesteal will always depends on how much you can deal to enemy. Number 6. Buy the Red Potion. This potion is called the Power Potion. 
This item is not a permanent item and will only last for two minutes. This is why this item is the final item you should buy. This item increases Ruby's physical attack by 30 and physical lifesteal by 5%. Now, let's proceed to demonstration. It is clearly that having potion gives a better damage and lifesteal. Number 7. Use Oracle. This item is a defensive item that actually enhances Ruby's regeneration abilities up to 30%. The stronger your lifesteal is, the stronger this effects become. This item also enhances any types of regeneration like physical lifesteal, spell vamp, and more. The HP you get from killing using the Assassin Emblem Killing Spree, will also be enhanced. This is one of the main reason why almost every Ruby user, who use Ruby as a fighter build this. Because if you want to use Ruby as a fighter, then this build is a must. This build also the best item for Ruby as a life stealer, since this item is the item that counters the anti-region items, such as Dominance Ice, Sea Halberd and Necklace of Durance. In here, I will show you a demonstration of Ruby using Oracle. The first one is a demonstration without Oracle while the second one have an Oracle. The first one consists 6 Endless Battle, while the other one consists 5 Endless Battle and 1 Oracle. The enemy I am facing have an anti-regeneration build. The broken heart icon around my hero is the representation that my lifesteal or life regeneration of blights will be deducted. The first demonstration dealt 489 damage and got 196 lifesteal. While the second demonstration dealt 451 only and but still got 202 lifesteal. Despite the first one dealt higher damage, the build with Oracle still got a higher lifesteal. That is the power of Oracle. So what do you guys think about this tutorial? Let me know about it. Leave a feedback in the comment section and let me know your opinion. So before we end this tutorial, I just want to encourage you to watch my other tutorials as well. I hope it helps you in some way. Hello guys, it's me Han. Before we end this video, I'm going to explain how you can join our game. The title of the game is Break the Code. Yeah, the word is not originally mine, but the concept of the game is originally made by us. So let's jump into the instruction. First, make sure that you really watch the premiere tonight. We put separately the six digit codes here in the video and we are sure that you can find the codes. For example, the first code is 04, then next is 03, and last is 09. So you have to combine all of this, and this will serve as a password to the link that I will going to put in the comment section after this premiere. And after you open the link, I know that you will surely know what to do. Just follow the instructions. This game have a total of 7 lucky winners, but the price depends on your answer and time. We will announce the winners tomorrow in our premiere. We will have one winner of Hidden Orchid Butterfly for the first winner, MPL Emote for the second, third and fourth winner, and lastly, Charisma Worth of 20 Dias for the fifth, sixth, and seventh winner. I hope all of you will join. This is not just a game but serves as an additional knowledge about our favorite game. Good luck, Kinetics!